friends, I am Becky of ThePinkSamurai.com and today I'm going to be talking about trades and collabs for Enamel Pins 101. Um, I did a quick poll on, I have to think of what it was called, a quick poll on Instagram um, and you guys wanted to know about trades and collaborations. So I thought I would do um, just kind of a brief overview of how I handle it. And, um, and a few different ways to go about it. So let's go. Okay, so let's talk about trades. Um, the first thing you should know about doing trades and like how to reach out to someone is just to ask them. <laughs> like <laughs> just send them a note on Instagram or in an email, introduce yourself, you know, say hi, I'm blah, blah, blah of blah, blah, blah. Um, I make enamel pins, I love your work, you know, maybe point out a couple that you like the best and say, hey, I'd love to do a trade. If you're into it, totally fine. If not, um, let me know and thanks so much. Something like that. So um, I, whenever I ask for a trade, I go in not expecting to have the trade. Like I'm not going to assume that someone's going to want to give me their product, <laughs> you know, um, but it's, I guess that always makes it even more fun when they do. <laughs> but um, go in, I, I'd go in not assuming too much because A, they might not see it. Um, a lot of times I'll get trade requests and then I'll see them way too late <laughs> because they're in, you know, that folder on in your DMs on Instagram that's like hidden from view. And then it's like super awkward to write someone back like, you know, forever later or it just disappears and that's annoying. So... Um, but emails are great um, just to make sure someone sees it. But also people are busy. Um, they might see it, open it, forget about it because they're you know chasing a child around, which is generally my case, and then come back to it later and think, oh no, I totally missed that. Why didn't I write them back? Which is why uh, I'm so bad at DMs on Instagram. So that's generally the case with me. Um, but if you don't hear back from someone, I think, um, like in a couple weeks, a week or a week or two, um, write back and be like, Hey, just wanted to see if you saw this. Um, you know, I'd, I'd still love to do a trade if you're up for it. Totally fine. If not, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then if you still don't hear back, I just kind of let it go. And then maybe you can circle back around in a few months, <laughs> you know, but, um, I think that's generally the rule when you're reaching out to anyone about business things is to kind of do your initial reach out, do a follow up, but don't get crazy pushy because that could um, push someone away and then um, circle back later. So those are kind of my tips for reaching out to people um, and don't be afraid to message anyone. You never know. Like it doesn't matter how many followers they have, you know, everyone's just a person. So uh, don't be afraid to reach out. <laughs> So another tip for trades is to trade with people who kind of have the same aesthetic or niche that you do. Um, because like people who make a ton of cat pins will probably be more likely to post my photos, you know, because I make cat pins too. So seeing, um, seeing people who have styles that really mesh with yours. So when you take photos of their pins for Instagram, it fits in really well with um, with your aesthetic and it's something that you know your followers will be into so keeping that in mind because you want to help out the person you trade with as much as they help you out so that's like people like Emin Sprout for me people like Tokyo Bunny um, people like Lutz Cups um, lots of people who do pastels and fun stuff and kawaii like those are people I absolutely adore trading with because I know their pins are going to make mine look good and my pins hopefully will make theirs look good too. So it's just a mutually beneficial relationship that way. So, and you know, it's totally fine if it doesn't fit or if you're trading for friends or presents or like, it's not, you don't have to trade just within your aesthetic. Um, maybe something is a little bit outside, but you want to share it on your stories and not quite on your feed. Um, but you still want to give them a shout out, things like that. But I generally like to, um, stay within my aesthetic for trades when I can, because I know it'll make really good group photos. <laughs> 
So I guess to wrap up the trade portion of this video is um, introduce yourself, be nice, be pleasant. Um, don't get offended if someone doesn't write you back. You never know what's going on in their personal life. Um, don't be too pushy. And yeah, like stick to a general aesthetic when you want, when you're thinking of like group photos, like pins you want to take in group photos. And just be sure to share the pins that you trade with another maker with your followers, whether it's on your feed in a beautiful styled photo, or if it's on your stories with a holy crap, look at my pin mail today story. So yeah, so for trades, I think that's generally my advice. Okay, now for collaborations. This is a little bit of a bigger deal than a trade because you are making a pin with another maker. You're collaborating with your ideas and you've got money on the line. So um, when if there's someone you want to collaborate with, just ask them. Like if they can't, they'll probably tell you. And um, if they don't get back to you, same thing that goes back to the trades. Like you never know what's going on in someone else's life. So don't be too upset. There are a few people I've asked about collaborations I never hear back from. I'm like, fine, that's fine. I don't know what you've got going on. It's fine with me. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to hold it against anyone um, because I know I'm terrible at DMs. <laughs> One of the things in an ask I think is helpful that I don't always do and I really need to is when you're asking about a collaboration, um, give people a general idea of what you're looking for in a collaboration. Like um, for my... Um, monthly pin thing, my Pink Samurai and Friends. I know the name of my own product. Um, <laughs> I usually say that um, the, my subscribers really like pink and glitter and cat stuff and cute things. And at least that's really broad, but it narrows it down from like everything under the sun, <laughs> you know? So um, I think I think it's helpful because if you approach someone and you're like, hey, do you want to make a pin? And they're like, sure. And you're like, sweet. And then you're like, what do you want to do? And you're like, I don't know. What do you want to do? And then it's like, I don't know. And then it just kind of fizzles out and then, <laughs> and then nothing happens. So having a general idea, um, I think is really helpful. <laughs> okay. So you've reached out to someone, you have a general idea of what you want to do, and there are lots of ways to handle the actual production and money things. I think there are three main ones that I have experience with, so I'm just going to kind of briefly overview what those are. So you can either split the cost 50-50 and then split the product 50-50. So um, someone reaches out to the manufacturer, you figure out whose manufacturer you want to use, figure out the price, one person PayPal's the other person half, they order it, and then when they come in, you split the inventory, and then you can figure out backing cards and stuff like that. Um, so that's one way. Another way you can kind of approach it is where person A buys everything. They do all of the costs themselves, they deal with the manufacturer, and um, you can decide who wants to do backing cards um, and packaging stuff if you want the person A to like handle all of the um, packaging too, um, or just sending out the stock. But then person A keeps enough stock to pay for their portion and then split the rest with person B if that makes sense. So it would be a smaller portion. Instead of each of you paying 50-50 and then splitting it 50-50, then it's more like um, one person pays all of the production costs and then um, the other person only gets like 20 or 30% of the stock, if that makes sense. And then it's still, you know, a good amount of stock, but the other person, uh, person A, is um, recouping their costs. And the last option that I'm going to talk about is licensing art. So basically, person A uh, pays for all of the production, packaging, uh, shipping, everything. And the pin stays just in their shop. And then person B will get a monthly payout um, of a percentage per pin. So that way, person B doesn't have to deal with anything and then they get a monthly check <laughs> and person A gets an exclusive product to sell in their shop. So it's basically like any giant IP ever out there licensing their designs to different companies to sell in stores, 
but on a smaller scale for your shop and with pins. That is kind of three different ways to go about collaborations and kind of handling splitting a product and money and all of that. Um, if you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments below. I will try my best to answer them. Um, I have experience, actually I've never done a split the cost 50-50 and the product 50-50, but the other two um, I have done. So I can answer more in depth um, on those two, definitely. I don't think I need to ask, answer too many questions on the 50-50 because it's pretty self-explanatory. But if you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. If you liked this, give me a little thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more Enamel Pins 101 videos coming soon. Thanks. Bye.